With us now is Tim Rencher. He's a reporter for the, the uh, Topeka Capital Journal in Kansas, and that's where Linda Brown lived. Um, I imagine having a woman like Linda Brown live in your community, a witness to history, a, a, a living piece of history and an icon. Uh, it must be um, pretty wrenching to, to have her pass away. How's the community dealing with this? Um, the community is saddened by the death of Linda Brown. You, you know, Tim, one of the things that I think for a lot of people today, when they see what Linda Brown through that sort of simple act of wanting to go to school and bringing down an institution, an institution that had existed essentially since the 19th century, going back to Plessy versus Ferguson, which established the separate but equal doctrine. Um, it was a lot for a young girl to carry onto her shoulders, and yet she did it. And here we are again in 2018 talking about young people trying to affect change in this country. Um, is, is, is that how she saw herself as somebody who was sort of the catalyst for this remarkable transformation of our country? Linda Brown was just an ordinary kid who was thrust into extraordinary circumstances through her dad's determination to fight for his family's rights. And she always had just considered herself just a regular person um, as she grew older. At one time in 1987, in an interview with the Miami Herald, she said that it was kind of a hassle being Linda Grant Brown, but she was willing to do it. She considered the cause that important. Mm. You know, the opponents of segregation at the time feared what would come after schools were segregated. What would happen if um, black boys and black and white boys and black girls and white girls were sitting next to each other? They would become friends. They would maybe go out after school. What would occur? And I'm wondering, after the lawsuit and after uh, segregation was struck down, how did Topeka change beyond the integration of the school? Well Actually, Linda Brown's contention was that things had not changed enough. In 1979, she actually was a plaintiff in a lawsuit that was filed to say, to try to achieve better segregation in Topeka Public Schools. That was thrown out by a judge in 1987. Actually, he ruled against them, but then an appeals court changed that, and they ended up winning the case. The Supreme Court decided not to take the case. So. Um, she, her thought was that the fight was still continuing and she was still a part of it. You, you know, uh, Tim, there are several cities, uh, towns in our country where things have happened that have had enormous change, enormous repercussions across the country. Um, and I'm curious how, you know, to peop, I guess you call them Topekans. I don't know that if that's Topekans. correct. Topekans, right? How Topekans feel whenever we talk about uh, desegregating schools, whenever we talk about this landmark decision, that they are at the center of that. There is a sense of pride in Topeka that we were part of this major case. Um, we have a uh, national historic site here in Topeka. Brown versus Board of Education National Historic Site. Um, for years, a lot of major civil rights leaders have come to this country. Uh, Rosa Parks came to Topeka, 1989, and Linda wow. Brown was the one who introduced her at the meeting where she appeared. So yeah, it's been good for Topeka. That's very cool. Tim Rencher, thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. We appreciate it. You're welcome.